Thank you for joining us. I'm Felicity Ezewike. Let's begin by telling you that operatives of the IGP Special Task Force on Petroleum and Illegal Bunkering have uncovered an illegal petroleum refinery in Port Harcourt River State. Force Public Relations Officer Ulumuiwa Adejobi described the findings as a significant breakthrough in the continuous fight against oil theft, illegal bunkering and economic sabotage. Adejobi said the operation had led to the arrest of four suspects and the recovery of 40,000 litres of petroleum products stored in 67 wide storage tanks. The force PRO added that the Inspector General of Police, Akayade Egbetokun, has re-emphasised the commitment of the force to tackling every form of crime, criminality and corruption extending to those involved in this economic sabotage. IGP Special Task Force on Petroleum and Illegal Bond Grid operatives uh, bust illegal petroleum refinery arrest four suspects. As IGP vehicles fight against economic saboteurs, the operatives of the Special General Police Special Task Force on Petroleum and Illegal Bond Grid have once again made a significant breakthrough in the continuous fight against oil theft illegal bunkering and economic sabotage. This milestone achievement was marked after the operatives, in collaboration with the Department of Operations, River State Police Command, on 12th September 2024, made discovery of a storage facility in Trans Amadi, Poracot River State, used in dealing and processing illegal, illegally acquired oil. This operation had led to the arrest of four suspects, namely Emmanuel Mwachi, male 58 years, Adamu Bala, male 35 years, Nora Musa, male 22 years, Bashir Abubakar, male 28 years, and the recovery of 40,000 liters of petroleum products stored in 67 wide storage tanks. The team, however, destroyed the site and recovered equipment and machines used in committing these crimes. The Inspector General of Police of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, IG Pulukayode, at the Olympic to PAD, NPM has re-emphasized the commitment of the force to tackle every form of crime criminality and corruption, extending to those involved in this economic sabotage. The force remains unyielding and will continue to bring these perpetrators to book. Thank you and God bless you. Staying in River State, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesom Wike, has solidified his position in the People's Democratic Party leadership crisis as the National Working Committee endorsed the River State Congresses. Weekend's loyalists within the PDP and WC not only secured the approval, but also postponed the National Executive Committee meeting originally set for September 26 to October 24, which could have overturned the decision. The PDP and WC, led by acting national chairman Umar Damagum, made this decision during a meeting at the party's national headquarters, Wadata Plaza in Abuja. The NWC meeting had been delayed for the past three weeks amid rising tension within the party, especially between a former River State governor, Wike, and the PDP Governor's Forum over the status of River State Party Congresses. Joining us now to discuss this, our special assistant to Governor Fubara on electronic media, Jerry Omoshe Gunwa, and human rights lawyer, Henry Ekini. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Yeah, good evening. All right, good evening. Uh, let's start with you, sir. What is your interpretation of events? Uh, can you confirm that the NEC meeting has been rescheduled and the NWC endorsement of the River State con um, Congresses? 
Jerry, the question is for you, please. Okay. Uh, um, first and foremost, I will say thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. I want to say that uh, directly your question or answer to your question is that um, the other day, the BOT led by um, uh, Adolfo Swagbara was in the state here yeah, and he made uh, a statement that um, uh, if the, river, uh, the PDP lost river states, that uh, they are doomed already. But I've also seen that uh, they are not making any effort, any effort to right the wrongs, uh, right from the days of uh, Peter Odeli, uh, he was the governor and also the leader of the party. Uh, moved to Tubike Roti Miyamishi, the same thing. Uh, it was a uh, wiki, uh, the now FCT minister that took over and he was also the leader of the party. And the question on everybody's lips is, why is Simulalaya Fubara so different? That is the same question we are still asking. Knowing the importance of River State to the party, I think we need to... Okay, Jerry, because of have... time, this is news. So our conversation are usually brief. Uh, I, I was asking specifically if you can confirm um, that the NEC meeting has been rescheduled and that... The NWC had endorsed the River State Congress. It's just that confirmation, and then we can. Yes, take it yes, we, we we saw it on the pages of newspaper. So, but uh, I can't confirm that right now. But we saw it on the pages of newspaper. All right, let's bring in Henry. Uh, what's your understanding? Has Wiki defeated the Governor's Forum, like some unnamed sources allege, based on recent events? Well, um, thank you. I, I, I wouldn't be able to say uh, whether it is a question of defeat and uh, victory, but, but I think it's about um, really examining the, um, if you like, the manipulation of power and control in the People's Democratic Party. But, but I, I mean, it's important to state here that uh, the, the uh, governors of the People's Democratic Party um, had actually reported, anyway, had actually... Um, um, made reference to the control of governors with respect to the leadership of, the, of a party in a state, generally, not just in the People's Democratic Party. Um, and then um, the, the congresses that uh, had held in River State, uh, from the ward to local government and the state, uh, I understand had actually um, some restraining order in that regard. So the, the National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party um, affirming those congresses uh, would mean that um, they, they never uh, countenance the, the ruling of uh, the court that restrained uh, the conduct of those uh, congresses. And then the, I, I, it appears it appears that the position of uh, the governors, that is the, the People's Democratic Party um, governors uh, uh, in that regard, also have not actually got their position um, insisting that the governor of River State should be the leader of the party. So, arguably, it, it may be for, for the moment, in the interim, some sort of um, um, a victory for the former governor of River State, that is um, the current minister of the Federal Capital Territory. But whether that victory, seeming victory, is going to uh, uh, be sustained um, in, in regard to the um, subsisting order that restrained the People's Democratic Party from conducting those elections. And again, this will also be a test of the influence of governors with the activities uh, of, of political parties, which I know indeed that governors um, have uh, very potent control uh, with activities of uh, political parties, including the uh, Anyosan Wiki himself when he was governor of River State. So, but, but a, a lot are actually happening in the People's Democratic Party, the tussle and control of uh, the, the party uh, between the National Working Committee, even amongst themselves. But then the fundamental question is, why the postponement of the uh, National Executive uh, Committee meeting? Because the National Executive Committee is an expansion, it is, is uh, wider and uh, I think more powerful than this, the, the National Working Committee. So we would have waited until the National Executive Committee meeting is convened and then uh, uh, see the reaction of, of that enlarged committee uh, against uh, what the National Working Committee has actually held as reported recently. Nodin, but before uh, I let you respond to what he has said, I want to confirm that you are a member of the PDP, right? 
No, no, not at all. I am not a member of any political party. I'm not a member of the No, PNP. no, no, not I to am... you, Henry. I'm speaking to Jerry now. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. I, I know you don't yes, belong. Yes, I am. I am a member of the PDP. Uh, okay. So if you are a member, you should be a stakeholder on some of these decisions, uh, stakeholder rather, on some of these decisions that are being taken. Are the decisions binding on you and your principal at the moment, pending um, what the court says and what Henry has uh, submitted? No, those decisions cannot be binding on us. Now, you cannot take a decision uh, against court order and you expect it to be binding on people. People went to court to get these orders. Same thing happened in this same river state here in 2019 where an order was given to the APC not to conduct congresses. They went ahead, and you know the rest of the story. So such decisions cannot be binding on, uh, uh, on us right now because there's an order that they need to obey before anything is done. Like Henry rightly said, I think the net will do justice to the whole thing at the end of the day. All right, I think I've asked you this version of the question uh, previously when we had this conversation, similar conversation, about the people of Rivers in all of this. What are some of the implications for Rivers citizens and the public that they should be considering um, with the unfolding event? Because it seems more attention is being paid to politicking than in actual governance. Right here, um, Rivers State. Um, um, Henry, the question is for you, please. Okay. okay, excellent. Uh, thank you. I, I think in all considerations, whether I with respect to the People's Democratic Party, the All Progressives Congress, or any other party, um, when, when there, there are um, such avoidable and unnecessary crises in political parties, and then the leaders of um, the state, and in, in essence, any state in that regard, um, um, fail to differentiate between politics and governance and differentiate between um, internal crisis of political parties and the expanded exp expectation of uh, citizens, then of course um, those um, that would suffer will be the citizens more. So I, I think I would say here in submission that um, the, the people um, expect more from government in terms of uh, the improvement and exp uh, their expectations in their welfare and then lives and uh, security of lives and property. That's fundamental. That's the primary purpose of government. So it doesn't concern us, really, and the, the greater proportion of the population of, uh, of the society, of River State inclusive, um, whatever is happening in any political party. But it's, it's true that um, our political parties have actually um, distorted the process of governance when they have these crises um, within those parties. Because um, it, it's, it's, it, that's the provision of the Constitution, that election is on the basis of political parties, and then uh, every candidate who is going to eventually be elected into any elective position is going to be sponsored by a political party. So whatever happens in the political parties would have some direct effect on okay. the effective governance and then uh, how they affect the welfare of citizens and then security of lives and property. All so right. I, I, I think all political parties uh, should have this consideration and ensure at all times that there is internal democracy in political parties and even the respect of the provisions of their constitution. All right, Henry. Uh, let me quickly uh, give uh, Henry um, Jerry 30 seconds to respond to this question as quickly as you can. Um, as of August 24, we know that the PDP governors publicly backed Fubara and called for a review of the Congresses, the state Congresses, and also affirmed Fubara's role as leader of the PDP in the state. Has anything changed since yeah. then? Uh, not, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. The governors have not told us that they have changed their stand, and uh, the, the governor of our state is uh, in charge uh, even though the uh, NWC is trying to play one or two, but I tell you, maybe at the neck level when they meet, the governors will hold their stand and make sure that the writing is done. All I right, want to gentlemen. ask before I go, uh, before I go, if you want to ask who is the leader of the APC in Lagos State, now despite we have somebody from Lagos as the president of the country, I don't think the president will want to go and double as the leader of uh, Lagos APC. I think, All right. I, I think you've made your point, no Jerry. We're, we're out of time. So I'll just say thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking thank with us. Thank you very much. A pro-democracy group in Edo State has warned politicians participating in the upcoming Edo State governorship election 
to shun campaigns promoting violence and focus on issues that intend, they intend to address when elected into office. The group, while expressing concerns over recent events in the state leading to the governorship poll, say the attitude of politicians in the state is capable of setting the state on fire. Definitely politicians to desist forthwith from fanning the embers and beating the tom-tom of war as we approach the election dates. They should take cognizance of the fact that power is transient, ephemera and, and transitory. Nothing. Nothing. I say nothing. Ahead of the House of Representatives by-election in Kaduna State, not West Nigeria, some members of the All Progressive Congress have called on political parties in the state to put an end to the marginalization of residents of Kaduru by the zoning, by zoning rather, the Chinkum Kaduru Federal Constituency seat to the area. They say this will affect fairness, equity, and justice for the people of Kaduru and bring an end to over two decades of marginalization. Our correspondent, Idong Joseph, completes the report. To inspire and guide all our counsels and actions. Almost two months after the demise of Ekene Adams, a federal lawmaker representing Chikum, Kajuru Federal Constituency of Kaduna State, the by-election to fill the vacant slot is yet to be conducted. While Nigeria's electoral body has informed citizens that plans have been concluded to conduct the poll, some think the position should be zoned to other areas that have not had representation outside Chikum, where the late lawmaker hails from. Kajuru started for only four years. After that four years, Chikum collects the seats for 22 to 23 years. Therefore, I think even if uh, an issue of sharing formula, we should be allowed at least this time around to be given if it's just eight years. I am 100% in support, not satisfied, in support of zoning this seat to Kajuru. So this is over 21 years. Chukun have been joined the, the seat. We also have capable sons and daughters who can actually represent us. That is why we are asking, we are pleading for them to consider us. With the date for the state's local government election also drawing closer, party faithful from the All Progressives Congress have also called on citizens to come out in mass to participate in the poll. To also appeal to them to come out in mass and vote from the world level and also the local government level so that we can produce councillors from the various 10 wards and also produce chairman at the local government level. The APC in the state says that their demand will bring about justice, fairness and equity, and also a sense of belonging to aggrieved citizens from the marginalized area. Thank you for staying with us. Still talking politics. National Interim Chairperson of the Labour Party, Nanedi Usman, has expressed her desire to be remembered for leaving behind the United formidable and indomitable party capable of winning elections nationwide. In her inaugural address, Usman emphasized the need for forgiveness, integrity and fairness to achieve this goal. She acknowledged the party's previous conflict but stressed that no group of, or individual should feel defeated as everyone emerged victorious through the reality of the law. She also encouraged party members to put aside their differences and work together towards a common goal. Joining us on the news is Factional National Publicity Secretary, Labour Party, Abayomi Arabambi. Thank you very much for joining us. I want for clarity of this conversation, and so I know what to ask, is under whose leadership do you serve as the National Publicity Secretary? Like I said, we have only one national chairman, undisputed, on social law, and that is Julius Aburi after the court of uh, a big judgment that restricted him after okay. you know the receiving order has inhibited his uh, tenure by one year. So the court of appeal has, has affirmed him as the national chairman on that to stand. That okay, I, I just needed that conversation. Uh, I just needed that confirmation to guide our conversation. So I'm going to ask you now, what is your reaction 
to the interim chairperson's call for unity and forgiveness within the party. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if a PT personnel is coming to the Labour Party to seek for forgiveness, I think uh, that is stand logically, you know, uh, in the end. And uh, we all know, as Christians, that there is no way Satan will want to prepare supper for our Lord Jesus Christ. That is abomination. A PDP personnel has no altar of a locus to come into the Labour Party and start pleading for forgiveness. I think my advice for her is this. She should go and settle a crisis with the ESTC rather than coming to plead for forgiveness where there is none. There is no vacancy in Labour Party. Both Peter B and uh, uh, Lesoti, they are not in any position to convey that next meeting. If, if you say there is no vacancy, if you say there is no vacancy in the party's leadership, what do you attribute to the crisis? Everybody, if, even uh, the, the most, uh, you know, ordinary person on the street understands that there is a crisis within the Labour Party. So what are the issues then? Well, there is no crisis. You see, we have PDP members, you know, that have infiltrated our party and they are preparing to move back to that party. We know their game. And it's not going Wait, to are you saying on in national our, TV that the, the, there is no crisis in the party when you have conflicting press conferences and then you have a chairperson whom you are saying is not in, is not the, um, is speaking for herself? It's not a member of the Labour Party for God's sake. And now let me do this analogy. I think we should not be convinced issue because of people ask money to throw around them. Whatever lie they say will not be taken as a part. In now uh, in Labour Party Constitution, we have said it time without number that people who are no locals cannot just go and convert somewhere as like a gangster and be digging out discussion. This is Labour Party, this is not PDP, where they are coming from. I still you're, you're still not, not answering the question party. I'm asking yes. you because nobody can just come out on the streets, because I'm look, taking it from a very layman perspective. Nobody comes out of the yeah. street, on the street, and just say, I am representing Labour Party, let's uh, call for peace. Besides, if the person is calling for peace, shouldn't that be something that you aspire for within your party, so you can focus on other pressing issues like election and, uh, um, you know, getting positions? I said before this program, I mean, when I started this program, that it is impossible for Satan to invite Jesus Christ to his supper. It is impossible. I said she's not a member of our party. I am still standing loud and clear. Who gave her membership card? Now, let me let me do the analogy to uh, Governor Lesoti. They said the tenor has expired. Who gave her card? In Kaduna, where we have our, our national secretary, the world chairman, the local government chairman, the state chairman, none of them knew as a member of the Labour Party. And they should remember. The Supreme Court is very clear that your registration unit is your word where you are going to pick up your membership card. So for anybody to not just go and bring on loan injured player from PDP to come and play our first level, it's not going to work. That woman is an injured player. It has been new white why he brought her. But as far as we are concerned, I will say constantly there are no crisis in there. All right, there uh, no Arabi, I, I guess you, you, you, you can run with this because we don't have somebody from another camp to speak on behalf of that camp. However, there is something I'd like to ask you here. In all of these issues, you know, it seems um, you are a national publicity secretary. Aren't you concerned? concerned about the impact of these crises? Because you choose not to call it a crisis, but it is a crisis from where I'm sitting. What do you want the ordinary Labour uh, Party member to feel and to take out of this? I I is all Thank well you. with the party? Should they continue to support the party? Where are their interests? Well, every Nigerian that wants the unity of Nigeria, that takes Nigeria unity, you know, uppermost in their mind, we support the constitutionally elected Labour Party officials. This other group of people, they, I said they have their mindset towards 2027. And let me open it up. All they wanted was to dismiss the Labour Party, COP 27 for PDP. Today, everybody knew Peter B had been romancing with Kokanso, with Atiku, over Maja. There, there was a time you romanced with someone else as well. Arabami, I think I've spoken with you at some point, and your allegiances were slightly different. So you're calling the kettle black when you at some point 
No, I, I, I never romanced anybody. I, I never romanced anybody. I said during the presidential election, I voted for Peter Obi. I didn't vote. I didn't vote for uh, for Ebola Tinubu. Let every Nigerian know. I voted for Peter Obi, but we do not have a government candidate. I'm for voting for uh, Governor Nkwabiadu. He should not be counted as a thing because in River, Peter Obi endorses PDP. In Plateau, he endorses PDP. In Nenugu, he endorses PDP. In uh, uh, in uh, Nasawa, he endorses PDP. In uh, in uh, in uh, or your state, he endorses PDP. So I, I don't think we've achieved much with this conversation. We have, a, we have our candidate. Yeah, you, you, you, you, you've just found a way not to respond to some of these questions that I've asked. I mean, you, the, the, the, question, the basic question I asked you is about the member of the party because it seems the leadership crisis is overshadowing every other thing no, that member, has to do. You have to be, uh, you, know, you must have membership card of the Labour Party. Before you can be a member of any party, you must have your membership card. Just like before you will be in Nigeria, you must have our international passport. I said this woman is not a member of the Labour Party. I am not a member of the Labour Party. All right, uh, that's the much time will permit us. We appreciate your time. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you very much. Let's bring you an update on the Maiduguri flood. Founder and chief executive of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, has donated 2 billion naira to support victims of the recent flood disaster in Maiduguri, Boroni State. Aliko Dangote made the donation when he visited Maiduguri alongside the governor of Nazarawa State, Abdullahi Sule, and a delegation from NNPC Limited towards hastening in recovery efforts. New Central's Umaru Kirawa reports that prominent Nigerian figures like business leaders and political figures have stepped forward to provide aid. You know, we have the presidential committee on uh, flood and flood disaster. Uh, that committee, which I chair, uh, they've already committed about one billion there. And then uh, I leave them with the foundation. We also give another one billion. Uh, we will continue to mobilize other funds and resources to see what we can do to alleviate the suffering of our people. So I definitely, you know, this two billion will uh, you know, uh, be with us earlier. Yes, for all the support that he has been rendering towards uplifting the standard of living of the displaced communities in Burma State since 2009 to date. The establishment of that small plant alone in Burma State is something that the entire people of Burma State are hearing this year and this team In the meantime, the Northeast Development Commission has unveiled plans to reconstruct Lao Dam and repair numerous bridges across the Northeast states, which were severely damaged by recent flooding. The managing director, Mohammed Al Kali, made this known in Maiduguri while releasing grains and other items to victims of the flood. Again, my colleague, Umaru Kirawa, completes the report. Thousands of houses and other infrastructures are still submerged in Maiduguri, the Borno state capital. With more than a million persons affected, victims of the flood take refuge at government camps or houses of loved ones. The collapse of the Alo Dam, which has been allegedly filled to capacity for the past one week, is said to be the cause of the flood in Maiduguri. The long term is how to control the, the occurrence of such things in the future. Uh, Alo Dam, we now said it uh, got annoyed and <laughs> angry and for uh, about 30 years ago, and it did it again. And what happened the two days ago is time is two, or what happened in 30 years ago. So we need to work to stop it from happening, or if it happens again in the future, let it be one, not, uh, not three. So, but that is going to be a very huge collaboration between 
the federal government, the state government, and all other agencies of our government or uh, donor agencies which we are going to pursue so that uh, we do the needful. The project aims to restore vital infrastructure, ensuring better resilience against future natural disasters. We are going to release about 200,000 bags of rice to the whole of Gnosis, 200,000 bags of rice. We are going to also release 150,000 cartons of macaroni or spaghetti. And we are going to release 50,000 cartons of vegetable oil. When you multiply by five, you have about 250,000 uh, gallons of, of, of beige oil. We are also going to release blankets, about 200,000. We are going to also release a, a, a mats, branded mats, about 200,000. And we are also going to release about 50,000 pieces of shutdown for the men because like those who are affected by this prolonged bridge collapse, I mean they left their houses without taking any of their wares. We are also going to release about 50,000 pieces of, uh, uh, for the women, another piece, uh, 50,000 pieces so that they can be able to uh, recoup. Uh, children we us, we have about 65,000 pieces. The relief effort aims to alleviate food shortages in the region, which has been struggling with extensive damage from the flood disaster. In my degree for News Central, Omori Krawa. Three Americans among 37 defendants sentenced to death by military court on Friday for their role in a May failed coup in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Armed men briefly occupied an office of the presidency in the capital, Kinshasa, on May 19, before their leader, U.S.-based Congolese politician, Christian Malanga, was killed by security forces. His son, Marcel Malanga, was among the Americans on trial, along with Marcel's friend, Tyler Thompson, who played high school football with him in Utah. Both are in their 20s. Les condamnés de la manière si appelée. S'agissant du premier Marcel Malang, mal à la peine de mort pour association de malfaiteurs, à la peine de mort pour terrorisme, à la peine de mort pour attentat, à 20 ans de servitude pénale principale pour détention illégale d'armes pour munitions de guerre, faisant application de l'article 7 du Code pénal militaire, prononce unique peine. La plus forte, celle de mort, confirme sa détention. S'agissant du premier, Nimbu Dongala Guy Vincent, à la peine de mort pour l'association des malfaiteurs, à la peine de mort pour terrorisme, à la peine de mort pour. The remains of Aisino Egi, the Turkish American activist who was shot dead in the occupied West Bank by Israeli soldiers, has arrived in her home country, Turkey. The 26-year-old was killed during a protest against Israel's war in Gaza. Her death raises questions of a potential regional conflict as the Kiev vows to seek justice and the war's death toll continues to rise. New Centre's senior international correspondent, Adesha Wajosh, has the latest from Istanbul. Aysa Egi's remains is received by Turkish Guard honor soldiers in Istanbul a gesture Ankara often reserves for statesmen and military heroes. It's an indication that her death is deeply personal for the government. Tukri is a staunch supporter of the Palestinian cause and a vocal critic of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Ayşenur Ezgi Eygi kardeşimizin e, şehit edilmesi, katledilmesinden sorumlu olanlarla ilgili olarak bir soruşturma başlatmış durumdayız. Bu soruşturma kapsamında ilgili... A graduate of the University of Washington, Ayşe was born in Türkiye in 1998, but moved shortly after to the U.S., where she took keen interest in political activism. Her parents say they welcome the government's investigation into her death.
İnşallah aynı şeyi Amerikan hükümetinden de bekliyorum. Çünkü Ayşe Amerika'ya gittiğinde 10 aylıktı. US President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have condemned Aisha's killing, saying Israel must do more to make sure such an event never happens again. A rhetoric that's failed to stop Israel from pulling the trigger. At least 16 Palestinians were killed in Israeli attacks on the Gaza Strip today, including five members of the same family in Al Mawazi bringing the death toll to 41,118 since the war began on October the 7th. World leaders are now in a race to rein in Israel's attack on the enclave. On Friday, Spain led a high-level meeting of several Muslim and European countries on ways to end the conflict. It's a solution Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejects, suggesting Palestine's sovereignty is a threat to Israel's security leaving regional leaders unsure of how to end the conflict, while it continues to claim many more innocent lives in the crossfire. In Istanbul, Turkey, for News Central, Adeshewa Josh. Let's now join our business team for today's updates. Business news in association with Money Master PSB, the easy way to master your money. In business, Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Wali Edu Medrit Gwonzi Chen, the World Bank's Vice President for Infrastructure, to discuss reforms aimed at enhancing electricity access and accelerating infrastructure development. During the meeting, Edu underscored President Bolatinubu's commitment to the Mission 300 project a joint initiative by the World Bank and the African Development Bank, which aims to provide electricity to 300 million people across Africa by 2030. Both parties highlighted the importance of reforms to improve efficiency, expand access, and ensure sustainable energy solutions for Nigeria's growing population. The meeting was also attended by World Bank Country Director for Nigeria, Ndiame Diop, and representatives from Nigeria's Office of the Special Advisor on Energy. Fitch ratings reaffirmed South Africa's long-term foreign and local currency debt ratings at BB-, maintaining a stable outlook. While the country faces hurdles such as low economic growth, high debt and inequality, positive factors like strong institutions and ongoing reforms, including improvements at ESCOM, supported the rating. The government's efforts to modernize key sectors and reduce policy uncertainty are expected to contribute to a modest increase in real GDP growth. However, Fitch warned that continued progress on these fronts is essential to sustain South Africa's credit worthiness. Kenya's president, William Ruto, defended a bilateral deal with Germany, stating it would not lead to brain drain but help address youth unemployment. At a press conference in Berlin with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Ruto highlighted the Kenya-Germany Comprehensive Migration and Mobility Partnership Agreement. The deal aims to formalize cooperation on labor mobility and provide opportunities for 250 Kenyan professionals in sectors like IT and engineering to work in Germany. Ruto reassured critics emphasizing that Kenya's young workforce can meet both local industry needs and Germany's demand for skilled workers while reducing illegal migration. And finally, gold surged to a record high on Friday, rising 1% to $2,583.45 an ounce, building on Thursday's 2% increase. The precious metal is set for a weekly gain of over 3%, bolstered by expectations of a Federal Reserve interest rate cut next week. Gold has risen more than 25% this year due to central bank buying, strong haven demand from conflicts in the Middle East and Ukraine, and increasing retail investor interest. Traders are betting on a potential 50 basis point rate cut, which has fueled bullish positions in gold futures, driving prices to new highs. And that's our offering on business news at this time. Thank you for watching. I am Perpetua Fasame Peter. The news continues shortly.
In sports, Aimba Football Club of Aba played out a goalless draw against L2L Falond of Burkina Faso in the first leg, second preliminary round of CAF Confederation Cup. Let's now join Okweolua Adebari for more updates. Sports Update, brought to you by Corn Oil. Corn Oil, we go the extra mile. And in sports tonight, the Hausa traditional combat sport of Dambe continues to gain international appeal after two Eastern European fighters prepared to make their debut in an upcoming Dambe tournament scheduled for the velodrome of the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium in Abuja on Sunday. The duel of Denis Cherenish from Russia and Mateusz Rikak from Poland will be the center of attraction at Sunday's event when they face seasoned Dambi fighters Dogon Shigemota and Danielu, respectively. Speaking at the press conference ahead of the event, Rikak, also known as the White Mamba, said he was overwhelmed by the warm reception he had received and was looking forward to competing in a new sport. Kazim Oguleye scored the only goal as Nigerian league champions Rangers defeated Angola Sagrada Esperanca 1-0 in the first leg of their CAF Champions League second preliminary round tie in Uyo on Friday. Oguleye, introduced by Super Eagles assistant coach and Rangers manager Fidelis Ilechiku in the second half, unleashed a spectacular long-range strike to break the deadlock. The reverse fixture will hold at the Estadio 11 de Novembro, Luanda, on Sunday, November 22nd, the reverse fixture will hold at the Estadio de Novembro, Luanda on Sunday, November 22nd. Rangers will need a draw to progress to lucrative group stage of the competition. In the CAF Confederations Cup, Etoile Filante were held to a goalless draw by Ayimba in Burkina Faso. The Nigerian side will now have the chance to utilize their home advantage in the return fixture to progress past the preliminary round tie. Entertainment news in association with Glow Unlimited. Tonight on Entertainment News, Nollywood actress Messi Johnson has sparked controversy on social media after a video surfaced on September 13, 2024, showing her publicly endorsing the All Progressives Congress gubernatorial candidate, Senator Mondi Okbebolo, in Edo State. In the video, she is seen standing on a campaign vehicle urging the crowd in Ward 6, Iruekwe, Isha West local government to vote for the APC. The act drew sharp criticism from fans on social media, where users expressed disappointment and outrage over her support for the ruling party. Many accused her of using her celebrity status to influence the public for public gain, disregarding the ongoing hardships faced by the country under the APC leadership. The criticisms reflected a broader frustration with celebrities aligning with political figures, with many perceiving such action as opportunistic and disconnected from the everyday struggles faced by ordinary Nigerians. Reggae icon and UN ambassador Rocky Dawuni has made an urgent plea to Ghanaians to take a stand against illegal mining, or Galamsi, which is destroying the country's water bodies and ecosystem. In a September 2024 interview, Dawuni expressed deep concerns over the environmental damage and long-term health risk posed by toxic substances like mercury and cyanide, contaminating the food chain and water supply. He emphasized the global attention of Ghanaians' environmental crisis and urged collective action Action to stop Galamsey, warning that it is robbing the nation of its future. Dawuni's call aligns with other prominent voices, including the Trade Union Congress, which has threatened protest if the government fails to address the issue by the end of September. That's all on Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment News in association with Glow Unlimited. And that's all tonight, but before we go, let's take another look at some of the major stories. Nigerian Police Task Force team has bust illegal refinery in River State. Northeast Development Commission has donated food to make degree flood victims, plans reconstruction of a loud dam. Labour Party's interim chairperson has sought unity, forgiveness amid crisis.
We also brought you news that three Americans are among the 37 people who have been sentenced to death in DR Congo over their participation in a coup. Do send your eyewitness report to the number showing now on your screen, or you can follow us on social media at News Central TV. You can watch News Central live on DSTV Channel 422, Star Times Channel 274, Apple TV, and on YouTube. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good night and a good weekend. <laughs>